how long have you been here for? Uh, to tell you the truth, this is the first time I've come along. My brother's been to a couple of other Occupy movements, but this is the first one I've come along to. And what, what's going on here? Uh, this is Occupy Democracy. Uh, this is about the current system we have. It's particularly relevant at the moment because there's an election going on. Okay. Um, what, do you, what, what did you think about what happened just now with the arrests and the police and the, uh, the tent people in the tent? Um, I think they disrupted what was a peaceful process and a, a peaceful protest. Um, and I think they were heavy-handed to do so. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else you wanted to say about what you saw me do? Uh, what I saw you do was essentially point out some of the hypocrisies and infuriate people to make uh, to make it a bit more aggressive, to change the atmosphere in such a way that stuff would start happening. Right. Um, and I think you encouraged both sides to act a bit heavier than they should have. Right. <laughs> that's what you were trying to do. Oh, it felt like I was trying to do Yeah, that. but I also think you were trying to make people laugh, which is cool. That's acceptable. Okay. Great. Lovely. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, you did a good job. You made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got killed. That's fine. That's fine. When is the first Three hours. Of ba this is baby bells, apparently. This is all for the baby. Oh, this is for the baby? No, apparently it happened with George as well. Yeah. It's, apparently it's three hours of baby bells. This is for the kid. This is for the so we have to sit listening to the fucking bells the, the for three kids. hours yeah, because because somebody had a baby. Yeah. 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 Why can't they just change the tune a little bit? Like exactly. instead of the same. So there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not just someone. Sorry, someone very important. Okay. So what what do you realistically hope to achieve by this gathering that you've got? I, realistically, I can't begin to say what the ultimate consequence of this will be in terms of how it relates to all the other thousands of attempts to try and get a different story about what's really going on and what our possibilities are out there. You know, with the fantasy, obviously, was to get you know, thousands of people that all see common cause in, in opposing the, the mainstream narrative around the election to come together and occupy democracy. Um, but as you, you probably know, it's quite difficult to get people who are already kind of stretched in their current organising forms to kind of to get together. Um, you know, Divide and Rule has worked for thousands of years and part of it we do ourselves just through very basic stuff like being busy and having a certain kind of focus that we share with a small group. But I do think it's really important to create spaces that have the chance of you know, changing the informational balance of power, you know, because this is, I mean, there's that great quote that... Um, uh, propaganda is to a democracy and what violence is to a dictatorship you know to a huge extent power is made you know, asserted and perpetuated by controlling the story that people have of what reality is so you know most people think um, unemployment benefit is literally 10 times what it is so of course they think oh we should cut the unemployment benefit you know this is because we have a very powerful information system that brainwashes people into a totally distorted sense of reality and I think things like this you know, especially linking with these iconic figures like Gandhi that are supposed to represent freedom, democracy, civil disobedience, etc. I think you know it's worth a try. Okay. And what about the three people that just got arrested for going in a tent? What do you think that will? How will that help? I think you know. It's, I mean, it's regrettable in a sense, but on the other hand, these these very kind of clear demonstrations of who the police actually serve. You know, we're told that, you know, the disabled people need cuts, the old people need cuts, you know, everybody's vulnerable, oh, they need cuts because there's no money, but there clearly is money to spend thousands of pounds trying to get people, you know, it's not like there was any suggestion those people were going to be sleeping in that tent anytime soon. Clearly it was a symbolic political, you know, symbolic political um, uh, artifact. And, you know, nonetheless, the need to kind of crush crush dissent before it gets any momentum is, is paramount. You know, if you if you spend billions on propaganda lying to people and getting them to believe it, then people that come out and tell the truth, especially in places where people might pay attention, um, it is, is something that you need to get rid of. And, you know, the reality is whatever the rights and wrongs of the Occupy movement and its strengths and weaknesses, it changed the global conversation around the the economic crisis at least for a while you know before occupy it was you know, deficit 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 a couple of bad bad apples in the banker barrel you know after occupy it was inequality it was tax havens it was the power of the city of london and finance etc you know and so i think they were determined as the, the law that they passed made very clear to try and prevent that fairly successful form of
of dissent from repeating itself, but we were determined similarly not to be cowed by that legislative move and to come out here you know, for 10 days in October, a weekend every month ever since, and 10 days now, um, you know, to, to try and make a principled case for a decent, better, happier world that would actually would benefit everybody, including the stupidly rich who are generally stupidly miserable as well. Okay. And, and one thing worth just to bring in some slightly wonky academic tone, there's a guy called Brad Werner, who Naomi Klein has somewhat popularised in her book This Changes Everything, who gave this super prestigious talk to the American Geophysical Union two years ago. He's from the University of California, so, you know, very prestigious academic. And he, his talk was called Is Earth Fucked? It was actually F, you know, asterisk, asterisk, C-K-E-D. But his answer to that, looking at things from, from the, you know, the state of the art point of view, is that the only thing that gives us a chance of a decent future going forward is disruptive social movements, you know, and all the successful disruptive social movements um, o- over time started off at a small scale, you know, and I, I've had Chomsky talk often about how for years he would go and talk to tiny groups of people, you know, from sort of 62 to 65, whatever it was before the Vietnam thing got going, you know, tiny groups of people all over the place, hardly anyone was listening, but it was that commitment to, to truth and justice and to doing the right thing that finally, you know, meant that, that he was he and others were there once the, the momentum started picking up to, to go from, you know, being apparently hopeless in terms of making a difference to actually being quite significant in terms of making a difference. And Nelson Mandela famously said it's all, it always seems impossible until it's done. I'm sure, you know, three years before women got the vote, most people were saying, oh, it's never going to change, human nature, yada, yada. And, you know, sure enough, that tipping point was reached. Because I think, you know, in, in human society, as I understand it, as in nature, most changes when they happen are abrupt. You get this kind of gradual building up of momentum and then you get a kind of tipping point and things change quite quickly. And, and that quick change is what, you know, all future generations desperately need of us in this generation. Um, do you ever think you might take yourself a bit too seriously? Some yes and no. I mean, it's, it's a really complicated run. I mean, I think... Like, it, <laughs> the mainstream science on climate change that's been sort of knocked down by hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, of, of lies is wildly conservative. The chances are we are way more screwed than the mainstream perspective suggests, i.e. we have virtually no time, if any time at all, to get things turning around on a vast, vast global scale. You're not so, answering the question. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm coming to the question. So, in a sense, like the, what we're here for is more serious than anything you could possibly imagine. On the other hand, the reality is that people only tend to get engaged through a kind of mixture of, you know, conviction and principle, but and things like humour and and kind of distraction and, and you know things that, that that engage them on a, on a sort of surprising level. So yes, it's really important that we don't just because why we're here is insanely serious that we don't get so carried away with being serious all the time that we don't actually communicate with people. Communicate with people, you know. And I'm I, I'm here for a happier, happier happy world basically you know no, no, Please do. a lot of what you're saying is, is like it sounds very complicated to me and i'm fi- finding it hard to kind of process you're obviously well more educated about it I mean, than i am I mean, simple, um, right? you're obviously more yeah so, so what could you put it into layman's terms say so you were you could say everyone was to see this and you wanted to engage people to come out to see these things who maybe didn't know any about the history of nelson, nelson mandela or any of this sort of stuff can you say in a very simple way well how this is going to help yeah, I mean, the really simple version is that all major social change where you've had powerful historical vested interests on one, on one side and, you know, the interests of everybody else on the other, whether it's slavery, rights of women, decent working conditions or anything else, those big social changes only came about because people like us, normal people, you know, got out time and again trying to work out ways to, to have an impact and, and change things. So, so how is this going to have an impact in that way? Um, I... Like, like every other every other movement, it's a thousand, ten thousand different little actions that people take to, to actually to inform how many people. You know, we do something like this. Ten, God knows how many tens of thousands of people are going to kind of get something on their Facebook or their Twitter and read something and maybe go to a video link or whatever it is. You know, you never know that you never know the ripple effects. Hopefully, get inspired that we might. You know, if. If the world is destroying itself and the one percent are taking over everything and destroying democracy and the health service and the rest of it, we might as well get together and try and do something about it. And actually, the message—and this is where the, the seriousness point comes in—the message is really important that we get out. Is that actually this stuff most of the time is inspiring? It makes people feel better. It makes people feel that they have, you know, that they're not going crazy in terms of seeing the problems in the world. And you know, it's, it's things like this getting you know, gathering momentum that, that do change things, you know. Like I think if you only if you only try and start something because you, you, you have a you have a sort of fixed idea of how it's gonna to get to that tipping point where millions of people are involved, then you're never gonna start something, you know. 
Um, but I mean, I think this is the kind of thing. I, you know, it's a basic, simple message. Oh, about democracy. Everybody agrees, or the vast majority of people agree, that <laughs> democracy is essentially bought by powerful vested interests, and loads of things we care about don't seem to be represented. You know, it's, it's a cliche in our society that they don't represent us. Um, but what is lost, I think. Um, in, in kind of feeling that we can't change anything is that actually we, little people like us, have got together and changed things time and again, you know, and that's the only way it's going to happen. Good. Thanks. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah, there was just one other thing that I just wanted to let me just think about it first. I'll try to be, be less serious. Uh, George. George. I'm George as well. George. Uh, I've lots of thoughts about lots of things that you have lots of thoughts about too. Okay, and um, one of the thoughts that comes up quite often is the idea that actually this is a problem of ego, that this is a spiritual problem, that that this is ego run riot. This whole area is ego run riot, and what happened over there? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and myself to a certain extent included yeah. was ego <laughs> operating. Sure, okay, sure. and what I mean by ego is I don't want to just be vague about it. I want to tell you what I actually what I've been taught ego is. Um, what I what I mean when I say that is desire, fear, and beliefs. Desire, fear, beliefs. Right. This is this whole thing is run on that. Yeah, and I guess what what I what Ad I noticed addiction, anger, and ignorance is in it is what the, the the one way of translating the three poisons in Buddhism. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you know, I'm not saying I know how to deal with it all, yeah? But what I saw happening there was just... Or that, was, or that just playing itself out. So, you know, I come in with a, with a megaphone. You could say that was my ego or whatever. I, I came in with a minute. Ego. Right, OK, Personally, that's fair know. enough, yeah. But people I need strong in. egos, especially yeah. to be able to stand up to a lot of, you know, a lot of the kind of abuse that you get if you do stand up on the parapet, so it's a difficult one. Yeah. yeah. So I come in, all of a sudden, and I get lots of people get uh, lots of people get very frightened, yeah, and they they respond with their fear uh, to me, projecting their fear yeah, onto me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it gets it escalates, right? The police come in, it escalates. The police are operating on fear, worried about their jobs. The three guys in the tent, they're operating on fear, in my opinion, and beliefs, fear, beliefs. Uh, and, and desires, yeah. That you know, and before you know it, they're being pushed around and and, and arrested, and the whole you know. I, I'm I, I know you're not. I presume you're not running the show, but no, you are no, 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 a significant no. player in it. Sure, sure, yeah. Sure. So like uh, right now, I, I I was here today for, sev for for you know I'm here today for several hours. Mm -hmm. A big part of me feels like I don't want to be around this. It doesn't feel very attractive to me, energetically speaking, because, 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 and it's something that I struggle with myself, because it's just too uh, tempting to think, to point the finger out and blame other people for the way I feel and, and for the way they feel. And so what's going on here doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel like people are taking responsibility for their own feelings and actions. I mean, re re you know, remember, remember your Heisenberg, though, you know, like the reality is that you went into a situation where we are, you know, constantly under pressure. Ev everything activists do is, is twisted by mainstream media to make it seem as sort of pointless and illegitimate as possible. And when somebody that, that obviously, we, you know, I, I think in terms of where your heart is, you want to see a be better, happier, more compassionate world as well. When somebody takes an action that, you know, because you're, you're absolutely right. You know, I think we need a spiritual revolution and the political revolution and spiritual revolution need to be two sides of the same coin. But equally, I think a lot of political movements, they are spiritual in practice. The very fact of, of you know, a community trying to build itself, you know, deal with adversity, deal with the struggles of how to kind of communicate with people that have different views in that movement, etc. That is a process of spiritual transformation. Is there enough space for that in our movement? I, I think today we were trying to do that, you know, as, as your intervention showed, even when people have been sitting trying to sort of do nice meditation for an hour, they can be easily provoked, you know, and certainly a lot of the spiritual stuff I engage with is very much about kind of getting you to try and 
you know, be humbled by that stuff. You know, you can work for five or ten years and think you've really got somewhere and then something will come along and just pull the rug out from under you and, you know, that's the way it happens. But I think, you know, in terms of your perspective on, on what was happening, I, you know, I do think you have a strong ego. I have a strong ego and people like us need to work on that and I do think there were times where, you know, you did slightly kind of interfere you know when somebody was already talking in the megaphone and then you just started talking in the megaphone as well you know that kind of like yes I think what you showed is that you know we are very much part of the society you know we've grown up with the same kind of neuroses we're not perfect and and I you know I certainly spent my life as an activist trying to you know do my best to, to share with people that are the activists that kind of getting on a kind of high horse and just kind of blaming the other and all the rest of it is, is not the best way to go but equally I think we do need to call out the very real powerful forces that do have a lot of power to keep things bad and actually make them even worse and on a spiritual level and I think this is one of the reasons that the compassionate revolution card that I, that I flash is so important is that 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 propaganda being the you know the same to a democracy as violence is to a dictatorship means that it, 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 that's a spiritual force essentially that propaganda it not only gives people a distorted sense of what reality is but it messes with people's you know, spiritual reality, it makes them more and more fearful, anxious, wanting, you know, etc., and, and therefore manipulable. So, to, to the extent that we can try and embody a, a positive, compassionate alternative, that, I think that's a really good thing. But, but things like this are, are, are constantly dealing with the tension of trying to be as, as kind of honest as possible and to kind of deal with all their internal problems in a transparent way but equally on the other hand be a spectacle that can actually share a simple inspiring story that most people understand about you know a problem that we can get together to do something about and that's that's a difficult balance you know and I don't think there's any easy solution to that but the more I guess we can have, try and have honest conversations and, and you know beware of where our own egos are getting in the way and you know work out when the time to kind of use that strong ego to stand up to, to pressure is a good idea and when the best time to back down is you know I, I've, I'm not there yet I doubt I will be for decades but the more I try the okay. better I guess. thank you everything is okay despite <laughs> everything being absolutely not okay <laughs> they're in London <laughs>